it all started, I would say, like a couple weeks before our show in Pittsburgh, where I got a cold email from a uh, like a videographer who wanted to to do a project with us. And so I didn't really have it on my budget, so I decided, let's just not do it. I just said, all right, I don't care how good your work is. I'm sure it's great. I'm not going to do it right now. No money. <laughs> no money. Let's just, let's just do the show and then go on to the next show and continue. But then I actually checked out his work, and then I thought to myself, we should probably just do this. So I kind of waited to the very last minute. We we're actually driving up to Pittsburgh. And I called him on the way to Pittsburgh and said, hey man, are you still available today to, to work on this project? You know, we were on tour opening for Turquoise. We knew it was gonna be a good night and you know, five hours before the show, we managed to get like a five camera crew together to, to capture everything. We're not putting out an album this year and I definitely wanted something to have for the fans who always come out to see us at our shows. And you know, as a touring band, going back to a town where everyone has all your albums and all your shirts and everything, it's always good to have something new and different to offer, and especially bringing Chaz into the mix. Yeah, I wanted something to offer people that included Chaz as well. On the drums, all the way from Stanley, North Carolina, give it up for the one, the only, Chaz Ray Shank. <laughs> Chaz Ray, that's right. Get to know it, get to know it on the bass, revolutionizing the instrument. As you can tell already from just two songs, this guy's made his home in many different places and uh, currently resides in Asheville, North Carolina. Give it up for the one, the only, Cody Wright. Thank you so very much, I really appreciate it. Last, but certainly not least, the composer of most of the music that you're listening to tonight, this man has also made his home in many different places. And he has the most beautiful blue eyes that you've ever seen in your entire life. And a beautiful wedding ring on his finger too. Currently makes his home in Asheville, North Carolina. One of the most innovative composers in modern music right here, Jonathan LaRue Scales. <laughs> Thank you. 
the way the band started, to make a long story short, I like to be very thorough, so I'm going to take this all the way back to college. Uh, I have a friend named Joel Spencer, who's a flute player, and we used to write a lot of complicated, crazy music for each other as like our outlet for how we wanted to express ourselves, and um, we formed a band together called Cast of Characters. We changed our name later to Character Farm, and uh, after college, we both moved to Asheville. That ended up splitting off, and he ended up doing other things, and then from there, I formed the orchestra, and that was just kind of like me continuing that trend of just writing whatever I wanted to write, using all my different influences, and just having this packaged group of people that I want to tour with and, and do this thing with. And so uh, over the years, there's been different guys that have come in and out, where maybe one drummer has to leave and another drummer comes in, one bass player has to leave and another bass player comes in. So over the years, it's been just a smorgasbord of just different dudes. And you know, now we have, we have Cody and Chaz and, and myself, and I'm very happy to be with those guys. My name is Cody Wright. I play bass guitar with the Jonathan Scales Orchestra. I got involved with the band about four years ago. Uh, I discovered Jonathan um, through a newspaper ad here in town. Uh, There's an article actually about him, and then I went out to a jam and, and ran into him, and I was a guitar player. And to make a long story really, 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 really short, I um, asked him if he needed a guitar player. I would love to play with him. And, he eventually replied and said he needed a bass player. And at first I didn't want to do it. Um, another long story in its own, very short. I ended up doing it and keeping the pick that I still used, that I used on the guitar, I still use on the bass. So that's where I'm at. Well, the way I came uh, involved with the Forkestra, um, really me and Jonathan have known each other for really about 10 years or so. Yeah, from school and jam sessions, things like that. Uh, so when I got the call, it was more like a friend giving me a call. Hey, I need your help on this. The music's crazy, but you know I was willing to give it a shot and jump in there. Had no clue that it would lead to more, like it did. But I, you know I'm just really appreciative of the of the opportunity more than anything. Coming in, um, again being a friend of Jonathan, you know I followed the band all along. So I've heard Phil and all the other drummers before. Um, so definitely. What I wanted to do was take my own voice and really honor the people before me. So everything that I play is, you, you can usually strip away what I'm doing and hear what they did because that influence is always in my mind when I'm playing. In terms of my mindset, how I approach the instrument in regards uh, to this band and as it relates to the guitar is that um, my sense of melody and harmony from the guitar kind of carried over because on the guitar I was a soloist. That was kind of like the thing that I liked to do that I had the most fun doing. So I already had that when I started playing the bass, right? And then the rhythm and the groove and then the listening to the band as a bassist and embodying the role of this instrument was really uh, where the orchestra kind of was my launch pad into this whole world of this thing. Interesting, so even though there's only three members in the orchestra. And also people always wonder why it's called the Forkestra and there's only three of us. It used to be a quartet. It's not really that exciting. It used to be a quartet and now it's a trio, but we're still the Forkestra.
working with Chaz and Cody, they're good people. Uh, Cody, he started in the band in 2011. When I first joined the band, it, 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 and it still is Jonathan's show, but it was Jonathan's show, you know? It's like, I'm just here just to, to play the parts. It was really cool to see him come from a guitar player to a bass player just to be in this band. And then, you know, I started, you know, developing my sound on this instrument because this was a new instrument to me. So in developing my sound on the instrument, I kind of started learning how to compose and combine my ideas that I had on the guitar as a guitar player with this new perspective that I was gaining on the bass, you know, in terms of the role of this instrument. And, and you know, now he's like blowing minds all over the world with, with what he's doing. And um, it's, it's really cool to work with people like that who are very dedicated to their craft. People like Cody who practice like 40 hours a second, you know, <laughs> which doesn't even make sense mathematically. That's how crazy it is. So Jonathan heard that development and, and he's, he started the song Contortionist Ballet off of our self-titled album. He like named the chords and he's like, come up with some tapping stuff for this. And so I sat down and, and wrote that. You know, that was one of the earlier things that I helped really write. And, and then some of the riffs on some of the other songs on that album, I took some influence from some of my favorite cats and, and combined that with, with some stuff that Jonathan was doing in terms of time signatures and stops and stuff like that. And he eventually, you know, when Mixtape Symphony rolled around, we were really kind of working together, working more hand in hand. So it's become a really cool, interesting combination of, of writing styles and compositional styles. It's interesting for me on a personal level to be able to hear their personalities come out through their instruments. Yeah, people like Cody who dedicate their whole selves to their instrument and putting all their emotions through their instrument. It's, it's really cool to, to have that as part of this whole project. And then even people like Chaz who just came in cold after Phil left the group, having Chaz come in 100% dedicated and into it has been a really good thing. Musically, I've grown a ton. Um, playing with Jonathan and Cody, I mean, anybody would grow. To me, a rock would grow if it had to do so. But just paying attention to the music and, you know, allowing Jonathan to really break me down, which I had never had anyone do that for me before. Um, for me, music was a gift, so I never really had to learn how to play. I came from a family of drummers, but it was more hearing them play you know, I picked up my own style from that. So working with him and working with Cody, I really asked them to, um, you know, just kind of do surgery concert by concert and, and tell me what I need to do differently. So over time, you know, taking that and taking what my voice already had, you know, I really began to put these things together. I think for me, like getting people to want to be a part of the project, it comes from them seeing me working hard. And I'm not trying to say, hey, look how hard I'm working or anything like that. But it does take a lot of something to, you know, get up in the morning and pretty much work all day on well, not just the music, but just all the other aspects of it that, that keep the ship running. And I think that when people see that, when the band members see that, and when they, when they see where things are going, where things have come from, it gives them more incentive to to want to stick around and also they get the chance to include their voice and you know every night they they all musically get to express themselves however they want to and so it just creates a good environment for them to want to be part of the whole project. Yes it's a vast misconception that working musicians are lazy. <laughs> Thank you guys very much. Mr. Chaz Ray Shank on the drums everybody. So this time, this is the part of the show where I feel like a, a ringleader of a circus, where I get to say ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls of all ages, creeds and all that other stuff. What you're about to witness on the fourth string bass is incredible, and I urge you to pay attention to what he's about to do here. This is a, uh, this is a solo spot for the unaccompanied fourth string bass that Cody likes to do from the heart, directly to you guys. Check this out.
Cut you right on the base, everybody. Everyone knows that Bela Fleck is a big influence on me. He's a, definitely a role model. Kind of like the way that he took the banjo out of its original context and what people usually associate the banjo with. Uh, it's not that that is what inspired me to do what I'm doing on Steel Pan, but it was like validation, you know? It was like, that's cool that he plays this crazy music on the banjo. So I don't feel so, so much like an alien. So I used to go see the Flectones. I would show up to their shows at maybe three or four in the afternoon, like when their bus was rolling in during like load in and sound check. And I would try to hang out at sound check and, you know, hang out and load in and just kind of watch the whole thing go down. And there was a period where um, I would show up so much that they just knew me. It's like, oh, hey, there's Jonathan, you know? <laughs> at this point, I was probably like 20, you know, 19, 20. I would show up and they, they just knew me over the years of just showing up. And finally, one day, Bela just picked up on the fact that I was always showing up. And um, one day he, he saw me come and he pointed at me and said, lurking. I guess he thought that was kind of like a creepy stalker type person. And uh, instead of getting too upset about it, I decided to go home and write a song about it in honor of Bela Fleck, in the style of Bela Fleck and it is called lurking.
I kind of did it on purpose. I kind of called it lurking on purpose and dedicated to him on purpose because I wanted to, I wanted to reach out to him, you know. And maybe that story was gonna scare him away, but I wanted to do it anyway. And so I sent it to him after it was done, after we made our first video of lurking. I sent it to him, I sent him the video, and um, he actually tweeted about it a couple times. Wow. So I, I feel very happy about that for what it's worth, you know in the Twitter sphere. That was one of the most just moments of honest inspiration uh, thus far in my career as a musician that I've ever had actually. Uh, Lone Wolf was, um, the whole idea and premise of that was based on an emotion that I had where I was out on the road in the middle of nowhere, you know, and kind of it at the point of missing home a lot, you know, being homesick. And, and really feeling, you know, we all go through points where we feel a little more isolated and we feel like, like sort of like, you know, we just want to go into our bedroom for a while and just kind of just read or just spend some time to ourselves. So the only, I was in one of those states, I was in one of those moods and I was hanging out and, and the only place for me to go was the van, you know, we were in Dallas. So fortunately it was a great day outside, it was beautiful. So I just went out to the van and, and I sat down and I just let all these emotions, and I had the door open, you know, it's like sunny and heard the birds and everything. And um, so I had the door open and um, I was just sitting there letting these emotions kind of just really bubble up. And uh, I had a little battery powered amp in there and I just plugged it in and I wasn't listening to any music or anything. I was just kind of sitting there just feeling these really strong emotions. But really that song to me is a call out to anyone who might feel like they're weird because they just want to be by themselves for a while. You know, it's like, it's okay. It's, it can be a beautiful thing.
Being a musician is not only being a, a dream come true, but um, it gives me the ability to inspire others. I've always been the person that in whatever way I could, I want to give back to those people around me and inspire those people around me. In no way do I feel like I'm the best musician, but I feel like I have something great to offer that can maybe pull out something great in someone else. So for me, whether it's playing for kids or grown ups. I've never wanted anyone to give up on their dream, no matter what it is. So for me, feeling like mine is actually starting to come true day by day, it's been pretty awesome to do that. So the more I see mine flourish, I feel like I can help somebody else continue to believe in that dream as well. Absolutely. There are enough people in the world, just like, I'm thinking just from a, just from a numbers standpoint, you know, I feel like if you put everything that you have on the table for whatever art that you're doing, there's enough people in the world to, that would like that. And it's just a matter of reaching out to those people. Whatever it is that you do, there's, there's a, there are people out there who want to support you and enjoy your work. So it's just a matter of finding those people and that's the part that takes years and years.
what do you think is the hardest aspect of touring in a band on the road in America in 2015? <laughs> the hardest part about touring for me personally as a band leader is all the other stuff. It's, it's not the playing, it's not the traveling even, it's, it's the, the maintenance and like maintaining. This is my first time uh, being on tour full time with some guys. So uh, for me, it's been interesting getting to know their personalities. Well, first of all, going on tour and being on tour is the biggest learning experience I've ever had in my life by far, 100%. Um, it, especially about myself. Knowing that more shows are coming in while you're on the road, knowing that those shows have to be promoted, knowing that uh, you know, there's more shows after that that we're planning on booking, and just the just the maintenance of it all gets a little gets a little crazy. I would say it's, for me that's the hardest part. The challenges for me being on tour is more based around making sure I get the right, the right amount of rest. Um, at some point, the best food that I can. You really get used to to immediately making wherever you go your home. You know, and at first that can be sort of an uncomfortable thing. But then it almost becomes such a comforting thing that when you actually get to where you're spending a couple weeks at your actual home, it's like, well, this is kind of strange. Also just recognizing that I'm representing the band wherever we go. So, you know, I'm a talkative person now, but before I wasn't. So I, I just want to make sure that my personality comes through to where it represents the band the best way that it can. Some people may not understand what that means, but for me, if I'm looking at it from a fan's perspective, how would I want someone to approach me if I was coming to see them play, you know, I want them to speak to me this way. So that's, that's really one of the harder things for me, because again, I was a shy person before. So now I get to come out of my shell and represent a band that's already amazing and growing. Touring, I feel like it should be kind of like a vacation. Out, like off of the stage, it should be like, hey, you know, we're in Colorado, we're in Florida, we're in New York City, let's just hang out and do whatever until the show. And for a lot of musicians, it does get to that point. But for where we are now, it's tough because I'm the guy who has to make sure that all the nuts and bolts come together. So I think that's the hardest part for me. Trying to make everything work and weave together um, like a friendship, a good friendship, you know? So uh, with these guys, uh, their personalities definitely come through. So I try to make sure that mine does as well. So it's just a matter of, of just becoming used to change and that's what my dad always told me growing up is we can survive if we can really learn how to adapt to change and deal with change like that. But before we go, we do this, we do this thing and it's fun for us, it's more fun for us than this for you guys. We're gonna, <laughs> and today we're gonna do this for Chaz because Chaz is actually the newest member of the band, he's only been with us for a few months. So. So what we're gonna do, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna videotape this. When I say, when I introduce Chaz, I want you guys to go completely ape shit, okay? All right, you guys ready for this? Every, places, everyone. Places, everyone. On the drums, all the way from Stanley, North Carolina. Please give a warm welcome to the one, the only, Chaz Ray Shank, everybody. <laughs> All right, so thank you for appeasing us with that, it's fun. So we're gonna play one more for you, a really short one. This is one I wrote in 10th grade called Desert. Thank <laughs> you. 
Stewart, thank you guys very much once again. We are John Lascales Orchestra. We're from Asheville, North Carolina. Very happy to be open for Turquoise. Chaz Ray Shank on the drums. Cody Wright on the bass. My name is Jonathan Scales, and we'll see you guys next time. Thank you. <laughs> now I got some outtakes for this motherfucker. <laughs> we decided to form a band together called Cast of Characters, right? Which later changed to the character. Sorry. Let me take two. Go back. Yeah. Actually, right. scoot one centimeter, two centimeters, three centimeters. Okay, right there. All right, that's good. I'm just gonna do that whole thing again. Yeah. Keep going. Cody's just gonna stay. Yep, man. right there. Yeah. Alright, that's good. Okay. Yeah. Alright, let's try this again. Sometimes it'd be like a Hey, why don't you guys keep talking so that we can pick up your conversation on the interview? It'll sound so good and professional. Right on the set are some of the key elements for what it means to be a successful band leader. Being a band leader is I have a lot more experience, obviously, with John. Wait, what's that? They're starting to talk. Well, the music was cool. Music is cool. Check, check, check. Let's actually check, record check. this because then if you want to put it in there, you can. So let's all just hold and be quiet for a minute. Check one. Hey, hey, check one, two. How many people mispronounce your name? Probably every nine out of ten, easily. So for everyone yeah. out there watching, how do you pronounce your full name since people will be knowing your name for some years to come with this orchestra? My full name is Chaz Array Jabbar. Chaz Array, Chaz Array, Chaz Array. It's not really that exciting. It used to be a quartet, and now it's a trio. But we're still the orchestra. Because you keep firing people. No. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm rolling there. Roll in there. What's it like to work with Puff Daddy? <laughs> Tell him to go. Wasting memory. Digital space is <laughs> so expensive. Wasting memory. This is a. Wasting memory! <laughs> cool. Sweet. Alright, let's hang tight for one minute of room tone. Right. Don't no, just leave it on. <laughs> Thank you.